It all started back in 2005 with a lesser known game named Fahrenheit, but it wasn't until 2010 that Quantic Dream really put itself on the map with Heavy Rain on the PlayStation 3. Heavy Rain brought with it enhanced visuals and a rich story that offered the player more options on how to progress than most games before it. Heavy Rain also brought us the famous press X to Jason scene that all that played the game would know and remember. Jason! Jason! In 2013, Quantic Dream gave us Beyond Two Souls, which starred Ellen Page and her beautiful singing voice. Hi everyone, I am Lucas from Aussie Gamers Express, and today I am taking a look at Detroit Become Human. Quantic Dream's latest release has promised to bring us a game with even more choices on how the game is played and what your outcome will eventually be. Detroit has also promised players that if your characters die, that is it for them in your version of the story as it continues on without any game over screens whatsoever. Did they succeed in delivering the promises with all of these views of grandeur? Let's find out. Detroit Become Human started its life back in 2012 when a little tech demo for the PlayStation 3 was released with the title Kara. The mini story in Kara showed an android being constructed on an assembly line until Kara started exhibiting behaviours that she wasn't programmed for. When Kara thought she was alive, the emotion towards a machine yes. became real. But I've only just been born, you can't kill me yet! Stop, will you please stop! I'm scared! Director and writer David Cage felt that there needed to be more to the 2012 tech demo called Kara and decided that it needed to be a full game and now we have the final product. Detroit become human. Detroit gives the player control of three main characters that tell the story of how androids in Detroit are essentially becoming human. In the opening scene of the game, which is also available as a free demo on the PlayStation Store, this puts you into the shoes of an android named Connor. Now he has been created by Cyberlife and has been given the specific task of assisting the police department with the ever-growing investigation into an epidemic of rogue androids or deviants as they're referred to in the game. As you take control of Connor, you are able to interact with a plethora of objects within the environment to effectively talk down a deviant android who is holding a small human girl hostage on the rooftop. She's just like all the other humans. Then you'll know. The more investigation you do by looking at the items around you, the more likely you are to succeed with your mission. I'm holding all the cards. If I die, she dies. You hear me? It all depends on how you decide to play for what outcome you ultimately get. Do you save the girl but lose your own life in the process? Or do you manage to talk the android down with a peaceful end? Or will you all die a horrible death right at the beginning of the game? Now following up from that first scene, you're placed into the shoes of the next character and his name is Marcus. Marcus is a carer for an old man, of whom you might find looks eerily familiar. Marcus's story introduces you to the segregation and hatred that a lot of citizens feel for androids, due to the issues of rising unemployment due to the effectiveness and relative affordability of these hardworking and never sick robots. In third place, we are introduced to Kara. Now, Kara is an android that is purchased by the famous domestic violence father to work within his home as a kind of housekeeper and mother figure to his daughter, Alice. Kara's story begins with her role to keep the little girl safe from the violence that her father, Todd, brings to her. You should tell me about yourself, what you like to do, where you like to go, 
your favorite foods. That would really help me. Now, I won't be discussing the story details any further than saying that the overarching story that Detroit brings the player is confronting and intriguing at the same time. Detroit deals with the underpinning realistic issues of our lives, which essentially shows a time where racism, abuse and slavery has taken a new form and is a real spreading epidemic within the world of the game. Dispatch, this is Patrol 457. Oh, I got a lot of androids down here. At the end of each sequence, which is broken up into neat bite-sized pieces that are easily consumed in 20 minute stints, the game shows the player a flowchart which displays almost like a report card on how you just played the scene out. These flowcharts show you the choices that you made and also a percentage of the world that also chose the same as you did. The flowchart will also display offshooting sections of the game that you didn't choose, but doesn't spoil anything by keeping those choices hidden until you go back and play them again after you finish the game. During my first playthrough, no matter how thorough I tried to be, Detroit always showed me that there is way more to the game than one simple playthrough. The replayability here is off the charts. I would even go as far as to say that Detroit is made up of so much dialogue and choice that it would be impossible for any two players to meet in the real world and discuss the exact same story and outcomes. Characters can die in multiple sections of the game and the events of the game will vary. Not slightly, but wholly. There are other games out there that like to give the illusion of choice in a game, but essentially the story will always funnel towards the same end result. Detroit doesn't do this. While the overall overarching story will be the same in all games, the way in which the storyline is handled and the results from the player's choices will vary significantly. This is the first game I have ever played where I felt like I was in control of how it all ends. And I was. It's with me. Now the graphics in Detroit are by far some of the most realistic that I have seen in my lifetime. Detroit Become Human is well aware of this and offers up some close-ups of facial shots wherever it can to show off the detail that they've put into these characters in the game. Just look at those perfectly exfoliated pores. It's very safe to say that Detroit Become Human has gone very deep with producing a game that looks very true to life in every detail. Oh, well, except for this dog. But I guess it's not called Detroit Become K9, is it? I know your name. I'm here to save your owner. Detroit offers up a game that will be thought-provoking and players will be itching to see what happens next. But is this the perfect game? The story is fantastic and the game looks amazing, but there are some hit and miss sections of the game. For example, this scene here with Marcus, where he is following a trail looking for some symbols in graffiti. It kind of felt like uh, a time-wasting chore. Alright, let's take a break from that. Let's take a look at some of the staples of gaming that Detroit just couldn't pass up on. No game is ever complete without a half-naked stripper fight. Don't move! Lieutenant Anderson. My name is And we can't have a police officer that is professional, functional, and successful in the game, can we? They said you were probably having a drink nearby. I was lucky to find you at the fifth bar. Detroit offers up an amazing experience to those that are looking for an enthralling roller coaster ride of emotions and the ability to shape their own experience. For those that are looking for an action packed game with constant action, you're looking in the wrong place. 
the gameplay can be minimal throughout the game as you only really need to interact with the game at a slow pace. And when the action ramps up in Quantic Dream fashion, we are given quick time events to play them out. Surprisingly enough though, these QTEs aren't as cumbersome as in the past and still allow the player to concentrate on the action rather than just waiting for the prompts to appear. To finish up the review here, my experience with Detroit Become Human has been a solid one. I didn't experience any graphical glitches or any game crashes and the game ran super smooth as I played it on a PlayStation 4 Pro. My story in Detroit will be strikingly different from your story, but on that note, I think it's time to finish up here and go and play it through one more time and change the way it pans out for the better. Or, or maybe a worse outcome. Thank you very much for checking out this video and if you've enjoyed it please click the subscribe button and check out my other videos. There's a cool thumbs up button there that really helps me out too so feel free to click that one as well. That's all I've got for now so until next time I am Lucas and I will see ya!